ハロウィークサルエピソード99を阻止するためキルアとベスコードを取るゴンの前にゴン completely staying out of trouble What do those feathers do? Poison? Or is that it? The bat's the loud one, interesting. Yep, Gon keeping a low profile, not getting into trouble. Even if Gon were to hide in a tree or in a cave, he'd find some way to ruin his low profile. He'd find some kind of challenge in the leaves. Combination X and X Evolution. Interesting title. Good for you. The one is very, very slowly dying from feathers. Another couple thousand of these, and it'll be finished. Figure this out really quick. They gotta be fragile, right? Yeah, I saw that coming. It's never that easy. One HP, one HP, one HP. Maybe you can just, <laughs> just continue on your way. <laughs> just take some quills in the back as you go. You must make no sound. <laughs> wow, what a gone solution. When in doubt, first comes rock. This looks like something we've learned from Knuckle. Oh, he's baiting her in. Uh, maybe don't turn around yet. <laughs> Do it. Oh, he is Uvogin. He is Uvogin. Wow, that was foreshadowing. He never even met him. Yes. Wait, what? Somebody just block it? What happened? Actually, this owl is a lot more ripped than I thought. Oh, okay, there's another mode. Oh, but now you now he's in gorilla mode. He's on the land. He's on land. You you just got him now, right? Come on, this is your territory. First comes rock. <laughs> Oh, this is the kind of Pokemon game I hate. The really technical one. Maybe you can sort of fire with your Nen. Does that draw any more attention than Uvagan screaming? Or you could continue to outscream them. Gon seems to be the first human on Earth to develop echolocation on a whim. What's with the pocket fabric? Oh, he's plugging his ears. Does Gon keep nothing in his pockets? Right. This is not really that alarming because they don't they're not doing any damage. Yeah, you just need to hit him once, right? Oh, that's that's an interesting challenge. That's very demon slayer. You gotta be both of them at the same time. That's the solution. It was in, right, right in front of us the whole time. Hit him with a giant tree. <laughs> it's pretty amazing going to that with a tree trunk. This fight is giving me Dark Souls flashbacks. The double bosses. You think you figured out which is the first one you should take down, only for there to be another one destroying you. Did he just jump up and punch her into the wall? Off screen? Bye. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Running first comes rock. Good. Thank you. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> oh, man. He team rocketed them. Wow. He geolocated the final destination of his falcon punch. Do you want? Thank you, Gon, for not making that whole episode. These scrub animals. These Final Fantasy 12 boss battles that are not difficult at all, but for some reason take forever. I also like how Gon said, go back where you came from with a punch. Wow, clue doing work. Will they even accept it? Wow, clue just saved a lot of lives. He's doing way better than Gon. <laughs> yeah, target. Target. This is the danger. It's horrible that she knows all this from whatever this is that she's sitting on. Yeah. Probably wouldn't occur to her that they would just want to save lives. 
You too, huh? What is he talking about? <laughs> well, I'm so confused. What's the temptation? The sweet delight of overthinking? I mean, yeah, you too, huh? This guy's time is severely limited. And for that, we are pretending to be grateful. The fact oh. that she can just sit here and be a radar. Wild. What do you do? <laughs> what do you what do you do besides being big? Yeah, they they know. It's it's scary. They're in the position where they're so far above it doesn't matter. It'll work out in their favor one way or the other. They're just in a different dimension. Goth Lion would injure himself stabbing them in the back. How the hell are going to gonna take on Neferpidu? How? He goes out here struggling with NPC ants 46 and 47. Honestly, the fact that Neferpidu is not bothered is probably saving their lives. What is this? Was it the king? <sighs> I get it. I wouldn't want to sit still either. Just please, please don't die. Please don't die. For a lot of them, it's a smart move. As strong as they are, they're inexperienced, don't know anything about the outside world, outnumbered, probably lonely. The humanity genes thing saving itself, because if they didn't have the ego that they got from the human DNA, they would just be in their dank caves eating fish and birthing more kings. But instead, everyone's trying to be somebody. This is fair. No, no, I don't... <laughs> he was, he was giving himself up for confrontation. But it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I made a solid pitch. It's... Uh, I think it's great thinking. Maybe falling under the category of the good that you can do. Like, they're just sitting in a tree while people die. They're not getting to the rural guard. If they could, they'd probably just die anyway. The cheetah is something tangible in their realm of experience and expertise that would do a lot of good. And most importantly, it makes me feel like Knuckle is safe for now. Knuckle, for some reason. One of the lives I'm most attached to. The bureaucracy. The bureaucracy. Well, that sounds like an arc. I'm already anticipating what that could mean. Pretty sure I've seen Hunter Association arc mentioned. Probably why it's springing to mind. We're really going into the setup of this thing. The thing that Netero is wary or not fully in control. Oh yeah, this has got to go. The time for petty factionalism is long past. There's something very Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen about this before Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> this is so... Wow, we're really, really getting into it all at once. Imagine thinking about political squabbles in the midst of a human annihilation event. The idea that they might be sabotaging this ant destruction excursion for votes is not great. Their goal is to be king of the ant slaves. Your skull can be at the top of the pile. Generally, I'm not a huge fan of conspiracy theories, but I also think there's a trap in, like, never a conspiracy. People really hunt for them. I think maybe because it's thrilling and it gives you the feeling like you're the one in the know, and, and there's like a little bit of a boost from that. And then on the other side, it's like, it's not possible that things are a conspiracy or that there's something underhanded happening because it's terrifying and I'd rather just not think about it. Malice is definitely real, but then so is incompetence. Very real. So these criminal mastermind plots that involve a ton of people and yet no one knows and there's no actual proof, just a lot of vague shapes 
we point out that can be formed into a narrative can sometimes be hard to believe. And I also understand full well that it's painful and frightening to just not know the truth, just not know. I feel like one does not have any influence or control over the situation, which is actually what I would guess is behind at least some of that type of extremely angry political discourse. That's like nothing matters in life or my world or my family or friends more than this argument. It almost has to be a self-preservation thing, right? That aside, one sort of abstract concept I think is interesting. Something I got from Metal Gear Solid 2, actually, there's this line about how the Patriots, this sort of supreme thought entity that's controlled everything wasn't necessarily deliberately started. It was formed naturally, as they say, not unlike life began however many millions of years ago. There's definitely ill actors, but you wonder sometimes there, there's this they that we use in describing this sort of great intellectual evil that's masterminding things for everyone. Who and what are they exactly, right? Like whatever group you've assigned they to, you look at the individuals, they're probably just a normal scattering of human beings, many of which probably want the best for people despite their human faults, etc. Where like the flaws are real, but that level of flaw doesn't really match this like great controlling dark force that's that powerful and that ingenious that they can execute all this stuff and bring people under their thumb, etc. Despite the infinite number of impossible to understand variables that would go into such a thing. And yet, even though it's hard to identify a they, it does seem clear that there are forces, right? Like there is some force that will come about and like push people or society in a certain direction. And like I said, it's very abstract, but you wonder if maybe it's not a life form of its own in a sense, where it's not any one individual, but an amalgamation of various individual forces that end up in a whole, but that that whole is subject to the very same forces that all species are, are subject to in, in nature where there's natural selection at play. And so those that are self perpetuating and self-protecting and find a dominant strategy, at least for some defined period of time, might actually form something that has a, a weird sort of life, even if no one individual is deliberately controlling it, like cells to the body. It's weird because thinking like that, it's it makes it both less frightening and more frightening. It's like, oh, it's just people and I can sympathize with people and forgive their just very human, understandable flaws. But at the same time, it's like, how do you even battle evil or things that have grown out of control if there's no target to even focus on? I haven't really thought this through, but maybe the answer is, again, one's own individual struggle for good and excellence, and then also speaking honestly about what one sees. It also fits in really well with the Thorfinn style, I have no enemies. There can be evil or terrible things without there being enemies. Yeah, I mean, I'm also not a huge fan of bureaucracy. I understand the frustration. <laughs> He's over his political rants. How Gojo of you. Right. It could be all of humanity. They're still not, I mean, the world is still not taking this seriously enough. Apparently, as I've been told, a lot of people do not understand Knuckles' power. They are not understanding the power of exponential growth. Kalua is out here saving millions by himself. We could, uh, we could maybe send it be a little more in sync. Oh, they're expediting things, maybe. Can we kill people with men through speakers? This is not suspicious at all. Standard Diego. Classic Diego. <laughs> Asking us to turn up our volume to the max. Make sure your doors are closed. It's also them checking on them. That was a pretty great counterattack. <laughs> Damn, alright. Oh, it's- oh, wait, oh, 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 this is different, huh? I was thinking that this arc recently feels like it's starting up again. It's like ramping up. We did the whole introduction to the ants and, you know, we had all the little minor annoying ants. And now we have the king, like, fortified in East Gorto. I, I really can't wait to see more of the king. He's like, hey, I'm gonna be really interesting and talk about political philosophy at, later. <laughs> like, at some other point in the show. We'll get there someday. Okay, the- there's a glaringly obvious new character. No idea, honestly. What does that squid remind me of? Maybe uh, an old Final, Final Fantasy VI? That thing that just kept popping up everywhere? Wow, it's really, we really got Jujutsu Kaisen bureaucracy before we got the king's political philosophy. I'm trying to think about this in a very real life human way. The association vying for power in a time like this, yeah, it's conniving, it's selfish. I gotta think or hope that it's really just ignorance. Like if they were convinced of the danger that this actually is, I want to believe, I do believe they might change their tact. Like why are you fighting to be king of a castle that's about to be reduced to rubble? 
Speaking of Metal Gear Solid, there actually is some connection between Gon and Kalua there, despite just sneaking in without any equipment or anything in your pockets, apparently. It's like while everyone is power positioning, you're just in there fighting tooth and nail to do good, and like you get everything done and get none of the credit. That's just how you're oriented, and you don't even necessarily want any of the credit. That's not why you're doing it. But it also like kind of gives other people the space to play that game. It's one of those paradoxes you hear about, the whole the, the best king doesn't want to be king. It's like if you really have what it takes to be reasoned enough to do it well, you wouldn't want to do it at all. That conversation definitely felt like setup. There was way too many details, way too much world building for that to just have been a random scene. Feels like maybe after the ant war, we go into a human war. So much for Pixis's common enemy uniting humanity that is not at play in Hunter x Hunter.